beloved humorist, the late Irma Bombeck, wrote most of her early columns from her home right here in Centerville, Ohio. Now, because of the efforts of our guest, that home is on the National Register of Historic Places. Hi, I'm Maureen Russell Hodson, and this is Let's Talk Centerville. Here to tell us more about that journey for that designation is Martha Boyce, who is a founder of the Landmarks Foundation of Centerville and Washington Township, Nathalie Wright, an historic preservation consultant, and Patrick Hansford, who is the chair of the Landmarks Foundation of the Centerville, Washington Township. So thank you all so much for being here. And you. just talking about Irma Bombeck makes me smile, brings a smile to all of us. But for people who may not be familiar, Martha, give us an idea of who Irma Bombeck was. She was a humor writer. She A very funny one. <laughs> that's right. Those of us who were raising families in the 50s and the 60s were pretty straight-laced. And she said, you got to laugh along the way. And your family um, shouldn't be treated as, uh, you know, something that's a big chore. Find the humor. And she really and, found the humor in all kinds of just daily living. Right? Oh, yes. And um, she, she uh, touched a lot of um, heartwarming things and things you'd been through. One of my favorite articles was when she wrote about her children. She, I can't remember whether she had one column about each child, but she had a daughter who was oldest and then two sons. And she wrote about her daughter, and at the end she said, and I loved her the best. <laughs> and then she wrote about the middle son, and she said, and I loved him the best. And then about her youngest, mm -hmm. Matt, and she said, I loved him the best. And so written like a good mother, right? <laughs> that's right. And that's sort of the, the whole thing of motherhood in a nutshell. So you know. she wrote columns, right? And she oh, yes. wrote a lot of her columns from the home on Cushwa, which is here in Centerville. Right. And so from that original column writing, she just became very famous, beloved, and well-known throughout the country. Right. She uh, had a, um, a fundraiser for the YWCA when she moved to fit the Phoenix area. She lived here in Centerville, then she moved to Bellbrook for just a couple of years. And when she was leaving Bellbrook to go to Phoenix, it was the fall of 1971, she had this nice talk. And there were, it was $25 dinner, and there were eight of us around the table, each a mother who had left our husbands in charge of the house and all the kids, and we'd come down to enjoy Irma. <laughs> and that, you know, everybody had this feeling about her of affection and pleasure, and she was unique, I would say, among the columnists in the paper in making people um, respond to her and her humor. And she was very warm and engaging as well. And, and some of the recognition, uh, Good Housekeeping, Most Admired Women, she was obviously a best-selling author, and um, her column was in more than 600 newspapers, which is pretty right. amazing because it all started, as we said, um, right here um, in her home in Cush on Cushwa, which is why, is that how you got the idea, or how did this whole idea of, of putting on the National Register, how did that start? With well, you, Martha? <laughs> yes. Okay. I remember taking a class at the Ohio Historical Society from Nathalie. Okay. And it was on creating National Register applications. And after the class, I said, Nathalie, <laughs> what about getting Irma Bombeck's house on the National Register? And her immediate response was, did she do her primary writing oh, okay. there? Was that where she got her start? Was it important in her career? You know, and it did turn out to be. I couldn't say affirmatively then, but, you know, after I studied it, the date she was there, the date she started writing, it was obvious that she started living on Cushwa Drive. Because the designation is not for the home, right, Patrick? It's because of what was happening. Yeah, it's it's not home. for the architecture right. of the home. It's, it's really for what Irma did there for, for Irma living there and writing there. So, you know, architecturally it's, a, it's just a ranch house, but it's, it's the fact that in that house, Irma took the experiences of her everyday life and 
turned those into these great columns that everyone loved and enjoyed. So you have this idea of having it on the National Register and you, and you approach Nathalie and then what's the next step, Nathalie? What, what happened after that? Well, many years went by from that initial conversation. Oh, okay. <laughs> About 15 years. Uh, maybe. Uh, Martha contacted me uh, sort of out of the blue and I asked the same question again. How was Irma in her career connected to the house? So that was our starting point. Um, I think by then Martha had a better understanding of the beginning of Irma's career and, and its tangible association with the house. And that's important because with the National Register, we nominated this under Criterion B, that's what I pursued, and that's association with an important person. And it has to be a very specific direct link to that property and what that person did that's above and beyond the norm. Well, maybe we better take a step back for a second. And the National Register of Historic Places, what is that and, and why is it so significant? Sure. Uh, in a nutshell, the National Register of Historic Places is this country's official list of properties worthy of historic preservation. And the property can be significant either for local significance, statewide significance, or national significance. And then the three basic components to um, be qualified for National Register listing are that the property is either 50 years old or older, that it has historic integrity, meaning that it still essentially looks like it looked when it was considered his historically significant, mm -hmm. and that it meets one of four criteria, either associated with a broad pattern of event or a specific event. Um, association with an important person, architectural significance, or archaeological significance. And so she fell under the um, important person right, category? Right, okay. yes. yes. And so, Martha, did you go and do research or find out what she, what she was writing from the home or where she was writing, or how did all that come about? I looked up the deeds downtown first to find out when she lived there. and. Also, I looked up Phil Donahue's deeds because he lived right across the street. Now, I know we all know who <laughs> Phil Donahue is, but there may be some people, there's a whole generation that maybe doesn't know who Phil Donahue is, so tell us who Phil Donahue is. He was a talk show host, and he, would, um, he developed the system of letting the audience ask questions of some important guest. He was the first one to really um, follow that pattern and make it so successful. And then went and on to na the national scene as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And they re the Bombecks and the Donahues remained friends over the years. And uh, Phil Donahue came back and gave a beautiful speech with clips from some of the times Irma had been on his show and a tribute to Irma at the um, beginning of the Humor Writers Conference that the University of Dayton sponsors every other year. It was wonderful. <laughs> and so the, the um, Bombex lived in that home during what time period? 1959 till the fall of 1968. So this is really when her career is really developing, right? Absolutely. It began in 65, I believe. Is that right, Nathalie? <laughs> yes, that was the beginning of her uh, national syndication. She started out in the Kettering Oakwood Times with right. columns. And then uh, one of the men down at the Journal Herald had her write a column. And within a few weeks, mm -hmm. he had her syndicated. He realized what a treasure she was. And, and really, um, as we were saying, so warm and engaging and, and people just kind of fell in love with her whenever they read her, her writings. And you were a fan back before she was a star, right? Right. We would um, take articles like this one, every trip is a step backward. And she talks about she went on this nice trip and nobody will sit in her living room and watch all her pictures, you know? <laughs> and uh, I have written here, thought you'd enjoy this. And I would s send this to my mother or aunt or sister. You know, we wanted to make sure we shared these ones that were special to us. People would clip them out and put them on the refrigerator, right? right? Because they always had a nice message right. in some way. 
Yeah, it was a form of correspondence. Something that, that um, maybe we don't see as much. Right. <laughs> Things anymore. have changed. A, a little <laughs> bit. A little bit. And so, Patrick, how did the Landmarks Foundation get involved? Well, Martha had came to the board and, and said, you know, I've got this idea. I think we're ready to do this and, you know, would be, be willing to, to make a commitment. Martha um, made a donation to the board, the, the foundation, and then the foundation matched that. And we entered into a contract with Nathalie to, to have her do the, the work. And, and there's quite a bit of work to do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was really sort of our role. Um, and I'll, I'll speak up Martha for a little bit. I, <laughs> I, I w from 1990 to 19 2004, I think I was on the Board of Architects Review and Planning Commission. And even back at those times, I remember Martha talking about wanting to get this house on the National Register and it's just taken this long to get all the pieces together and, and find everything that, that really l places mm -hmm. Irma there at the house from, from 59 to, to 68 and her writing from 64 when she was doing zone 4, 50, 59, mm -hmm. which was our zip code out right. here, and then getting on to the, the, to the Journal Herald. So, that's how we got involved. Martha brought it to the board, and it, you know, we're always looking for good projects to support like that. Well, tell us about the Landmarks Foundation. Well, our, our mission is to, to um, support and to, to encourage uh, preservation of historic properties here in Centerville, Washington Township, and to, uh, to help people who maybe own historic properties, help them uh, maintain those and, and give them recommendations on how to do things like that. Um, we'll, we do. Um, we've we've hired different architectural consultants to to do building studies of existing buildings here in town, and and, and obviously working with with Nathalie too. So maybe 20 years ago, you had this idea that this was a goal, right? And then obviously, it wasn't something as simple as putting pen to paper. You right. had to do a lot of research. Yes. Kind of walk us through the steps of once once Martha talked to you, Nathalie, what you sure. had to do. Uh, the first step was communicating with the State Historic Preservation Office to make sure they had a comfort level that, that indeed there was enough direct link between Irma's career and the house, that it would meet that criterion, and also that it maintained historic integrity. There have been some changes to the house, and properties that have had alterations do get listed. It's more a cumulative change. and. Um, looking at the property comprehensively. So that was really my first step to coordinate with them and they felt comfortable with the house and were very excited about it and couldn't wait for the draft nomination to come in. So from there the next step was doing the research. Um, a National Register nomination has multiple components. The two main components are a narrative description of the property and then outlining the history. And I think it's important for people to understand that it's more than just this is a nice old building. You have to put it into a context. Mm -hmm. What makes it um, special, different, significant beyond just being an old building? Um, and that's what makes the National Register different maybe than a local register listing. That was the beginning in, in how, we, how we got going. So when, when you look at her career, did you have mm -hmm. to cite specific columns that maybe made reference to that home or that you knew were written during that time? Yes, I did do that. Um, thankfully, Martha had a great archive of <laughs> Irma Bombeck materials. she's been a for a long time. <laughs> I saved she stuff, too. She gave me yeah. a big box. <laughs> Uh, there were, and also, I should mention that the Bombeck family, once Martha had made contact with them, she put me in touch with them once we had the contract in place and were really ready to go. And they were very, very helpful. And Mr. Bombeck's assistant sent me a lot of materials. And she actually had sent some articles that were very early, um, trying to remember the date. I think they were among the first that she had published for the Dayton Journal Herald. But there was one article in particular where she was talking about the do-it-yourselfer and that Mr. Bombeck was a big fan of do-it-yourself projects. And some of the stuff that is in the house today, he did as a weekend project, and she talked about it in that column. And, and we and, do have a couple that was of photos a lot of fun. Think, that Patrick shared <laughs> right. with us because we have the... Yes. Yes. That's the fireplace. The fireplace. In the kitchen. 
And he told me that he found that fireplace in a house in Dayton that was being torn down and he bought it at like an architectural salvage sale and installed it in the house. Oh, so he is pretty handy. Yes. Yeah, he was. Okay, and then we saw the, the beams, the which beams. are... Yes. Phil Donahue is still jealous of him <laughs> for getting those all done and up, and they're still there. He talked about it. Mm -hmm. And did she write about the beams or just about she that as did. a project yeah. as well? She joking, jokingly referenced them as giving the house a Masonic Lodge flavor. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, and then this is the bedroom? That's where she wrote, and she had bus beside the bed um, two stacks of cement blocks and then a large pe board over the top, and it was, you know, adjacent. It's kind of a makeshift desk there that yes, she these great and columns on. she put on. her legs over the side of the <laughs> bed, and she was right there ready to write an idea in the middle of the night. It was well, that's all good thinking. set up. <laughs> and we should say these photos are what the house looks like now. Correct. Right? Yes. So right. obviously with the time that they lived there, they would have had the 50s and 60s decor. That right. It's actually all right. coming back so well. <laughs> if you're not familiar with Irma Bombeck, or even if you are, we wanna, we've got a couple of the books here. And, but this one in particular, um, The Grass is Always Greener Over the Septic Tank, has special meaning as well, Martha. And tell us that's why. That's right. She wrote that in 1971 after she was in Phoenix. But it features all of her friends on it's Push a the Drive. It's a tell right? <laughs> and they all knew who they were. And, um, the present owner would get feedback occasionally oh, from the neighbors right? <laughs> who'd come back and say, I was so-and-so in that book, and she said this and that, you know, and they loved it. Oh, I'll bet. And then, as we said, she's the author of numerous books, but um, this one in particular, she also, she dedicated, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. it's to, to all those good folks that she wrote about. Right. She has their names there. <laughs> And we should let people know that, you know, you can go to the Centerville Library and pick up her books and you can read her columns because even though they may be 30 or 40 years old, everything is relevant today. And we were saying before we started the program how there may be a generation that is did not get to the chance to read some of her work. And, and really, it's it's all good stuff and it's very contemporary. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't, I don't think that there's a message that you wouldn't uh, find something good in. I agree. Yeah. Going through the box to get things for an athlete was so much fun. You know, you had to read all those oh, <laughs> articles and check them over to see if there was content she could use. And I'm sure there was a great. lot of content because I have to say, and I know, Patrick, you talked about it a little bit earlier, but Martha has so much material, and this just seems like this was a, a huge ambition for you, but you, you really took it on. I was four years younger than Irma. And so it was what you call on my bucket list. I wanted to do it while I was still alive. Well, and you achieved it, <laughs> ma'am, and it's, it's wonderful. What, what does that mean, the designation? I mean, what, what does that mean for the house? It can never be torn down or, or what? No, not at all. The National Register of Historic Places does not have uh, design guidelines or restrictions or a review process. It's an honorary list. Okay. So the there's no placard or anything like no, that. No, only if home. a property owner purchases one. So it's really meaningful in the sense of, of what went on there. And, and for, for you, Martha, it's been a, a long time dream. Right. And then really, I guess, to, to share with people who may not be familiar with Irma Bombeck or her, or her good works or her great humor, which well, is what you like to point out, Patrick. Well, it might be important to point out that to get accepted to the National Register, the current owners had to to approve yes. also, and and the the the, the family, the Reeves, have been very gracious yes. in working with with Nat, Nathalie, and and uh, Martha on the on the on the project. In fact, Mr. Uh, Reeves is also a writer, oh, so okay. and writes in the sunroom. I think I think mm -hmm. later on Irma would write in the sunroom. So it's interesting that there's obviously a, some sort of creativity <laughs> yeah, great vibe that, connection that there. occurs in that that house. And so. we do thank them because obviously if they did not participate, this would not have happened. Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. I was surprised with the thrill that people had when this got into the National Register. I have never known of such enthusiasm for any single National Register application in Ohio. Really? Is that, that your experience too, Natalie? Uh, absolutely, that's my experience. And I almost feel like I didn't prepare the property owners enough, but um, 
it's very unusual that um, to have a sustained level of interest for a property being listed. Usually there's a little flurry of interest and then it gets yeah. quiet. Um, but it's been months since the listing in February it, it, when it was officially designated and the process had ended and I'm still having people contact me about it or want to talk about it and it's right. been fantastic. And we should say it's it's still a private home. So yes. Please yes. Right. Knock, <laughs> please please knock, knock on, on the, the door for a right. tour. Yeah. 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 Please don't do that. Good point. The, the <laughs> property owner says that when they have the big conference down at UD she can see a lot of cars going by very slowly <laughs> on right? Cushwood Drive. Isn't that right. wonderful <laughs> that there's that kind of interest? Right. What this about, I know, we, I know that we've lost Mrs. Bombeck because she passed away in 96, Six, mm -hmm. but her family, what, what is their reaction to all of this? They emailed us, you know, and said that how pleased she would be, and it, it was sort of, you know, a joke to, in a way to have your house in right. the National Register and how would she deal with it. And so she definitely would see the humor sure. in all of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> would have made one so. hell of an... Uh, Article. Article for her <laughs> <laughs> call. Right. But they were thrilled, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, um, nobody was really sure that it would get in. I think I was probably the only one that felt like I 100% was. 100% confident, I'll bet. That's she knew right. going to happen, yeah. I, I, um, the owner said when I first contacted her, well, we've made changes. And when I went out and looked at it, they had put a. Uh, family room in where the garage was, so the garage was still the same size, and then they put a different kind of porch out on toward in the backyard area, and it was still on the original uh, patio foundation, okay. so the footprint was still the same. Mm -hmm. And I think that helped to get it into the National Register. So when did you submit it? Did it take several months to hear back, or how does that work? Oh, I've already forgotten when we first submitted it. it August. Of, In the summer of right. 14. Yes, yes. The process typically takes was nine year? to 12 months, but from the time you submit a first draft to when it actually gets listed. And did you feel confident about it? Matthew? I did always, you feel like once we knew for certain that there was a definite connection to her national career uh, springboarding from that house and that she was actually writing in that house, you know, she didn't have a rented office somewhere else. She wasn't at the newspaper facility writing that it was happening in that house. And after the initial conversation with the State Preservation Office, I was always very confident about it, too. And yeah. so you probably read a lot of her columns, a lot of her work. Well, not as much as I would have liked. I was looking more for, again, that putting it into context mm -hmm. and thinking about other humor writers and and what made her, there's a little bit of how is this person similar to, so that you're understanding the, br the broader picture from that time period, and then the how do they rise above. So I was looking at it from slightly different eyes than just reading the columns, although I did read some, and I did ultimately read over, uh, after oh, I was so completed, the, the grass again. is always greener yes. over the septic tank, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, um, as you had mentioned earlier, I, I hope that this publicity spurs people to yeah, read her books Read now. her books, check out some of her columns, and um, it, it's all good. And, and I, think, I think heartwarming is, is the right word. It just makes you, right. makes you feel good. Yeah. Something you do want to clip out. You want to call your mom. You want to call someone <laughs> who's, who's important to you, right? I know you want to share something right. else. I was just amazed. This is the... Um, newsletter of the Ohio Historical Connection. And in January, they came out with a report of how the Ohio Historic Site and Advisory Committee, is that right? Ohio Historic, <laughs> well, you made me forget. Ohio okay. Historic Sites Preservation Advisory Board, yes. I missed one word. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We'll it's a cumbersome on that name. <laughs> <laughs> but they had this um, newsletter with mm -hmm. uh, the report from that group and yes. how everybody thought, oh, their mothers just love that <laughs> woman. We've got to get that house in the mm -hmm. National Register. And the whole article was about their consideration mm -hmm. of it. Then the next month they put in a little article mm -hmm. that it had gotten in. <laughs> 
And we had a wonderful article in the Dayton paper. It was um, about so big with the house in it and the children with their mom at her desk. And I think National News picked it up as well. I mean, yes, it's really yeah, yeah. yeah, it yeah. was in the Columbus paper and the Toledo paper. And then this is an article that Natalie <laughs> wrote. Yes. And this is the um, Heritage Ohio, a preservation group that's mm -hmm. statewide. Yeah. And um, or she just, has all kinds of materials here, yeah. <laughs> just in, and it's really, is this yes. atypical, right? It's not... It is something. a little atypical, yeah. yes. In yesterday's mail, this UD uh, quarterly magazine came, and here was the house, and all the little balloons tell you little bits of information about Well, her legacy um, continues because I know there is the writer's workshop, as you mentioned, at UD, and Irma's house, also associated with... Catholic Social Services. So around Dayton, she's still a, a very okay. much beloved figure. Right, and Tom Cecil worked ceaselessly for several years to get Brown Street named for her <laughs> down at, by the University of Dayton. And if you go down there, you see it's Irma Bombeck Way. <laughs> I wanna ask you, Martha, before we close, what does this mean for you? Because you've worked so hard, it's been such a, an effort of love, and now it's happened. Oh, I was thrilled. That was, you know, you nice things happen uh, periodically, and this <laughs> was <laughs> this year's nice thing. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Uh, and if you'd like more information about the Landmarks Foundation, you have a home tour coming up, right, Patrick? That's correct. On Saturday, December 5th, we'll be doing uh, visiting five homes. Uh, we have three tours. Now, the Bombeck House is not on the tour. The Bombeck House is not on the tour. Uh, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 6 o'clock. Uh, we rent vans, we take you to the various sites uh, so you can visit the homes. And we'll be selling tickets here shortly. We're locking in our final houses here. So. Okay, so we'll have you back to talk more about it and Let's we'll hope. give you information about the tour. Um, favorite quote, do you have one of, of Irma Bombeck that you really enjoy? I don't have a quote, but Story. Um, she wrote about the father who dropped his kids off for church while he sat in the car and read the Sunday paper and how God would understand that poor dad needing a little extra time to himself. <laughs> See, those are timeless kinds of things. You That's know, it's, right. It doesn't matter what era we're in, parents always need a break. I That's that right. For sure. How about for either of you, a favorite story or quote that, of, of Irma's that you've come across? What, what I'd mention is Mr. Bombeck had quite an impact here in the in the community too. He was he actually taught at the at the uh, in the school system. Okay. So I'm sure that there are people that still live here in town that actually had him as a teacher. So they were they were quite active in the community. Well, and we just have to remember that the grass is always greener on <laughs> the septic tick. I mean, that's a great Very title for good. a book. Folks, thank you so much for sharing your information. Um, as you said, Natalie, we're gonna, we're gonna encourage people to get out there and read more Irma Bombeck stories, columns, books. You can go to the library, you can get online and look for them, but you'll all be recognized again this evening at our council meeting, so we appreciate that. If you have any questions about the city of Centerville, feel free to call us at 433-7151. If you'd like more information about the Landmarks Foundation, what's a good number, Patrick? My office, 438-9919. Okay, thank you. Thank you again so much for your thank good you. work. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. is limited. No matter how great our intentions, on our own we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our world a better place. Rotary. Humanity in motion.